Hi, my name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia. Dogs and cats mostly uh, with a specialty in fish health. I've seen fish for a long time, kept them for even longer. Started out when I was, uh, I guess, six years old, maybe. Um, when I went into a pet store at the age of six and bought my first fish tank, it was a 55 gallon. You could see the six year old carrying it out. Not really. My dad set up the fish tank anyway. I'm rambling, but I'm not going to mostly for this video. But I do suggest that you have a pen and paper handy because we're going to cover a subject that goes all over the place. Um, and that is uh, the cleanliness of an environment. And it, it there's so many areas that that matters because they're basically what it boils down to in a fish disease outbreak in a fish tank or a pond is how clean is the environment and it can be deceptive because your water can actually look very good. Water can actually test halfway decently and yet there are high levels of what is called background pollution. There are numbers and chemistry that you can't as easily measure. Uh, and it really kind of goes to decay products. Um, lots and lots of fish poop decaying in background in a fish tank. That is super common. Uh, and in a pond environment where leaf litter and pine straw and stuff, uneaten food, fish poop, all that accumulates in that environment if it's neglected, can also be a significant detriment to fish health. Um, so uh, with your pen and paper handy, let's get started. Um, in a tropical fish tank, when you assess the cleanliness, you might see a tank that is very clean looking. And typically, if it's an advanced hobbyist, they're keeping uh, things like gravel um, clean, uh, siphoned clean. There's a siphon. It's got a big bell on the end of it. It's clear, and you can put that down into the gravel. It sucks up the gravel, pulls out all the malm and fish stuff, and then... Uh, sucks out the water leaving the gravel and you can clean your gravel that way siphon cleaning it's a good thing to do not terribly often but periodically to keep the gravel stirred up if you have live plants uh, not so much because you don't want to really screw up their roots but a lot of times if you have live plants the roots of the plant are maintaining a certain level of disruption and nutrient gathering from the gravel it's not that important then to gravel clean but so you're looking at these fish and they're sick and not doing well and you check the water and it's pretty good. Maybe a smoldering ammonia level in the background, high nitrates and a slightly low pH. And you want to fix those problems and maybe you can. But at that point, you want to assess whether or not there's a lot of hidden dirt in the gravel um, under rocks is a great place to look. If you lift up a rock and there's a brown cloud that comes out, that's a dirty situation. And some dirt is fine. I've seen tanks that are unhealthy because the owner is meticulous and keeps no dirt in there, at which point equilibrium between bacteria and fish is difficult because you don't have food for the bacteria to eat. So overclean isn't good. Uh, underclean is worse. So, uh, in pond environments, it's even more common. Um, a pond generally should not have leaf litter and uh, pine straw in the bottom of it. Maybe part of the year when it first falls, and then you should get all that stuff out. There are other ponds called ecosystem ponds, and they have gravel on the bottom. They have live plants around the edges. Their filtration system is open, not pressurized. They typically have a skimmer and then a waterfall. It's a very nice system, typically, if it's set up correctly. Uh, but it also has to be maintained correctly. And that is typically annual uh, cleanouts to make sure that nothing is accumulating in the gravel. Uh, as far as uneaten food, fish poop, leaf litter, uh, bad stuff that settles down in there. That needs to be removed on an annualized basis. Um, the filtration system needs to be poked um, to see whether or not the media in the filtration system is holding a lot of uneaten food and fish poop and all that. Um, and so that goes to cleanliness. Uh, question being, when was the last time the filter was cleaned out? When was the last time you got in the bottom and cleaned out leaf litter and all that? And really, in sick ponds, you're going to go out there with sick fish, and you're going to just look at the pond, and you're going to see leaves on the bottom. Not just a few. You're going to see a layer of leaves and pine straw and debris on the bottom of the pond. And, and a person's going to say sometimes, oh, it's been like that for a long time, and nothing's happened. 
Okay, let's address that. Just because the fish can survive that for a year or two or three, doesn't necessarily mean that under other circumstances like stress and the introduction of a parasite, all of a sudden, the lack of cleanliness and maintenance in the pond isn't going to gang up on them to create a vulnerable stress situation. So in a situation with a fish disease outbreak, you kind of have to insist on cleanliness as part of the improvement of the fish's environment to make them healthy again. So um, that is one of my common questions is when was the last time the filtration system was cleaned? When was the last time the gravel was cleaned? What was the maintenance of the filtration or pond? How often are you doing water changes? Because water changes have more to do than just reducing nitrate. Water changes, um, they improve water quality, they add carbonates back, they tend to normalize pH, um, but they also remove background pollution. They have a tendency to decrease carbon dioxide levels, remove decay products, stray amino acids, growth inhibitory compounds, a variety of other things. And if you're not doing water changes or water replacement, the fish suffer for that. Do they immediately get sick? No. Are they chronically ill? Is there a always level of background chronic stress? Yeah, that's what it is. And then you add something else and it like touches it off like a, a tinder. Uh, parasite and all of a sudden it hits in a, a, a willing environment like uh, stressed fish and not fab water not fably clean uh, ponds and it, it, it goes off like a, a pile of hay with gasoline on it so in the assessment of cleanliness it is basically what's the husbandry been how does the pond look is there a lot of leaf litter on the bottom when was the last time the gravel in a fish tank was uh, siphon cleaned and uh, see if you can disrupt a lot of um, brown goo from under the plants and rocks and that sort of thing. And that would be something that you need to ameliorate before expecting really good luck with uh, any fish disease treatment. So I think in brief, that kind of covers cleanliness. Uh, like I said, water quality is a important thing for fish disease outbreaks. So, and that's one of the ways to establish water quality is to keep your pond or fish tank clean. If you're not clear on what you're supposed to be doing to maintain your pond or your tank in a clean condition, just ask somebody. Um, most of the time an experienced hobbyist. There's so many other YouTubers that uh, advise on uh, everyday management of fish tanks and that sort of thing that it would be worthwhile to ask them. Uh, read up, watch up. But so that's this step, cleanliness, assess it, and uh, let's move on to the next subject. Thank you for watching.